The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There are certain people that isolate themselves. They feel they don't need anybody. Now, unbeknown to them, it's because of priorities. Because if you can hate God's beloved creation called humanity, something is severely wrong. If you are your father's child, when you love what the father loves, when you care about what the father cares about, this season that we're in is full of prosecution, accusation. Same thing that Satan does. Satan does nothing but accuse, and he'll lie and accuse and do everything to isolate the saints. Christ reconciles the saints. He does not isolate them. He calls them out of the world to a higher standard. And you have a lot of people who don't want that. They're deeply embedded into the world, and they will not break away. Unfortunately, even in the Bible, there's a falling away. Even in the Bible, some don't make it. And there's truly a remnant at the end. But that season is upon us. Now, just to discuss something a bit further. Take, for example, the earthquakes, the weather phenomenon, all this stuff that's happening. Right? Normally in times, in times past, we would have storms sporadically throughout the years. And the, and the death toll would be one year, then skip the next, skip the next, and then another year, skip the next, right? From different happenings. For some reason, this year, the death toll is mounting. And almost every single happening, that the world sees. Have you noticed that? We've had earthquakes before. We've had people die before. But for example, Morocco, that problem, uh, the one in Mexico, so the other ones, when the numbers come back, it's almost uh, unbelievable. We'll have storms and then you have a great many spared by the storms and they do an absolute tally, like Maui, right? Maui itself, those that died in Maui, now listen, I'm one of those people. That term false flag, I don't entertain, here's why. And you can call everything on earth that takes place is a contrived happening. It cannot happen unless the Lord allows it. He has angels that direct things on the earth. So the only way something awful is going to happen is if God gives room for that thing to happen. But you could say that's a false flag, not by God, but by those iniquitous works. Or, or entities on the earth that will seek to take advantage of it. So I don't like that term false flag because people still die. Some people emphasize the happening over human life. I don't do that. If human life is lost, I don't care how it began or how it started. I'll never argue about those things. I have a concentration in life lost, not the mechanisms as to why something happened. You know, I learned a long time ago, you can study the past all day and all night. All it will do in, in a lot of cases, especially when people die, is give you an idea at most of what happened and cause you to walk around with a terrible attitude, with an accusation in your heart to others, which means you're not totally free. You won't be able to break free. That will be compiled throughout the years. People are walking this earth right now just like that. They're full of accusation. A lot of things have happened and they have no person to absolutely direct it towards, which causes them to be hostile to a lot of people. You see that the world right in the USA specifically right now in our country, in the USA. Before the USA, it happened to Great Britain, didn't it? We had all those people accusing each other. All sorts of things. Murder rape was up and everything else. Satan loves to cause people to accuse each other of just about anything. And it doesn't matter if the accusation is justified. Any loss of peace, any loss of joy did not come from your father. We know who it comes from. If Christ bestows us with one thing, then we know that the enemy who opposes Christ does the opposite. And so for the most part, people are being taken over from their internal accusations. So much so, it's, it's oozing out, pouring out on everybody around them. People are becoming hostile in that season. Now all that, it likely will not build up into a crescendo. There is something will take place that will satisfy something in a great many people. But at that same time, Satan will take full advantage and things will arise that people are not looking for. And when that takes place, a true breaking is going to take place where you're inside of the season right now. Satan will work some very devious works and the Father will permit those devious activities. I even looked into the Bible because I asked myself, at what point does God allow Satan 
to begin to consume lives. The consistent answer that comes back is look at the world for what it is. Look at the murder rate in the USA. Look at the raping how people are damaged by abuse and rape and all these other things. This world has gone absolutely mad. At the same time, people are not really concerned about all the women and the children being snatched up and used as slaves for some weird group out there. They're focused on internal turmoil and they're skipping the heart of the matter. There's an entity behind it, but mankind, because they want payback right now, they must assign blame to someone they can see. They won't assign blame to the one they cannot see, which is Satan. The one that hides, which is Satan. The one that is more subtle than any beast of the field, which is Satan. They won't look for him, though they're assigning blame to those people they see, missing the entire spiritual conflict. And so we have casualties from Satan and casualties from our fellow man. And if we don't wake up to take note of these things, to really assign the motivation of us wanting to dismantle some other person, that that comes from Satan himself, but we don't realize that we're going to be utilized by Satan to do things against our fellow man. If you hate your fellow man, then all your intentions of evil, not judgment, evil is going to be upon that individual. In fact, you partake of a cursing of humanity. I will not do that. I know there's an active curse upon humanity by people who practice witchcraft, by spirits that God has kicked out of heaven. They curse humanity, and I will not play a part in the cursing of humanity. I will not. The more you become aware of those things, the more you will not be utilized as an instrument of darkness in this earth. In today's terms, that same darkness is being justified and people are calling it justice. That's also in the Bible. They'll call good evil and evil good. When people call the destruction of somebody else justice, that is people calling evil good, isn't it? Because human beings are what? God's beloved, his greatest creation, isn't it? Of all the forms of a Messiah, he came in the form of what? Humanity. God certainly loves the world, humanity in the world. He's already taken care of everything else. You need not worry about that. And even in that, that's being perverted. The emphasis is humanity, not the trees and not the animals. The emphasis is humanity. That is God's beloved. Everything else is just like the earth. It is part of the earth. Everything else is okay and is doing what it is supposed to do. But humanity is the object of curiosity for evil, for judgment of those hearts that have been starved of love and who walk around accusing. And how many people are allowing Satan to do what God said don't do? That's why God said don't judge, didn't he? Judge not, Jesus said, that ye be not judged. And then he gave a reason why you don't judge. So that's him telling us not to judge, yet people love to judge. Why? Because they are believing the excuses of Satan. See, God is still God. God doesn't need us to exact judgment upon anybody. He's already set up a system on our behalf because we have a weakness in that area. But just in case you haven't noticed, more and more people are joining in with the cause of the prosecution and accusation of humanity than anybody else. My hands are off to all who would preach the gospel. I know that many people out there, they don't like certain people preaching the gospel. I respect everybody who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ that would dare reach another human being with a message of hope and a truth of Christ, despite who they are. I know that the world desires worldly qualifications for a person to do that. I still believe that God calls people outside of the institutions of mankind. Institutions can only please mankind. They do not please the living God. You have some theologians, for example, that believe, but a great many theologians do not believe. And that's commonly understood among theologians. We're getting down to the wire of more than a few things. Yesterday, these earthquakes, I'm sure that people have come up with the reasons as to what they are. There are external ties to these earthquakes. These earthquakes are different, I think you guys would agree. The earthquake in Morocco, 
I just got done talking on Pastor Paul's show, speaking about those orcas. You guys remember that? That they were warning people? That the orcas that were supposedly attacking boats were warning people? That sounds silly, doesn't it? All of a sudden, of all places, we have an earthquake in Morocco. And and what happened there? Anybody know? Was it a slight one? Did it do little to no damage? That has nothing to do with me. And it's, of course, it's not going to be exactly on the money where people have that, you know, that they, they can't make any indistinction against it. No, it was right there in that vicinity. The vicinity of an area that's going to consume just about everybody there if they persist to stay in that place. Do you know that? And who will they listen to? They're not going to listen until they're burning. They won't listen until they're on fire, until their way of escape is cut off. They can't escape through Algeria. That's not going to happen. They can't go to Spain from there either. That's going to be cut off. Those people are going to burn if they don't pay attention. God always speaks. He always speaks, but people are not listening. And he's very merciful to stave things off another day and another day and another month and another year. But time is running out. Time is ending. It's running out. Time's a favor. And it doesn't mean the end of the world. No, as I said before, the people who lost their lives in great numbers in the world, well before any of this stuff that happens today, those happenings had been numerous throughout history. People have been losing their lives in great numbers for a long time. So you have a lot of people that say, well, God won't do this. They got to stop saying what God won't do because things have already happened in the earth that have consumed millions, hundreds of millions of people. And they lost their lives all at the same time. And there was no escape. They simply went through their process here on the earth. And now another time is coming and a great many are going to be lost. We don't know what the time passage will be between that these happenings that we're about to undergo in the coming of some antichrist that the world will be under its one-time umbrella we can have something to take place in a month that would take hundreds of millions of people nobody expects that do you know why because they'll say the rapture has not come yet you know something like that can't happen without the rapture it happened in world war ii as a consequence of war hundreds of millions of people lost their lives as a consequence of world war one same thing happened as a consequence of the numerous plagues that took place same thing happened as a consequence of civil war genocide was happening on the earth entire peoples had been wiped out on the earth entire races given over to slavery true evil rearing its head imagine that and we're still here christ has not come yet but lots of people die in these massive culture-based events we forget about that don't we if a person believes, truly believes, then believe, believe all the way, but never say what God won't do and never pretend like we know the timing perfectly because we don't. None of us do. We know we're in a season, a very strange one, but don't deceive yourselves into thinking that somehow hundreds of millions of people cannot be lost to disease, war, famine, and otherwise, because the Lord's word tells us that yes, they can. They have been all throughout history. In fact, in the Bible, it says wars and desolations are determined until the end. Desolation, that word implies the loss of life on a big scale. Murder, cancer is a plague nobody wants to recognize. Why won't they call it a plague? It's a plague. Is it not a plague? There are other diseases in America that have been named and because they're named people will not call it a plague it is a plague it's consuming hundreds of thousands of people every single year that's a plague COVID-19 strikes and because of the controversy over COVID-19 no but people stopped thinking about the death period people died from underneath people's noses and it seemed like nobody cared who died they just cared of defining what the motive was behind the virus that's what Satan and his people do they don't care about human life they care about the happenings. They don't speak about the loss of human life and they're not moved by that. They only care about the happenings. The robotic nature of these fallen angels, the exact same way. They focus on the various mechanisms that operate within the realm of all logic and they could care less about caring about humanity. Don't become cold and callous during these times. If you don't watch yourself in these areas, 
those areas will be attacked and you will lose them and lose your personal humanity in the process. And just how many people have lost their humanity already because they don't want to deal with humanity. They hate humanity. They would rather live on a mountain all by themselves, away from every single human being, not helping a soul. Who put that in people's minds? Where'd that come from? That didn't come from our Father. That did not come from the living God. In fact, wasn't it back in the 70s and 60s and 70s? Let me give you a progressive nature of something. Back in the 60s and 70s, even in the 40s, didn't people report they were being abducted? Kind of like uh, uh, the succubus, right? Kind of like that thing that used to attack people back in the 1800s and 1700s and 1600s, right? Same thing. The visitations at night, except this time. You know what they were telling everybody? Almost consistently, they told everybody that you're destroying the earth. You have to take care of the planet. So then you have a generation after having undergone this visitation that nobody believed. See, when you don't believe something, you won't address it. And if you don't address it, it festers. And it did fester. It festered to the point where an entire generation only cared about the planet, the trees, the grass over human beings. Now they're in Congress. Now they're in corporations. And what do we have in the world? A carbon tax. What ideology is in the world that shouldn't be there? It is humanity forsaking itself, making room for the planet and decreasing human life. What wickedness is that? See, I'll tell you how unsober things are. These people who say they don't believe in creation, they believe in evolution, well then guess what? The earth evolves, doesn't it? Even if they believe in the evolution, it has been destroyed and recreated so many different times by natural processes. It shouldn't matter how much carbon is in the air. The earth will take care of itself. It'll simply go through another cycle, won't it? It'll go through another cycle again and again and again. See, because they don't believe in creation. They believe in evolution. Well, naturally, in evolution, guess what happens? When the carbon is too high, the earth goes through a phase. That phase diminishes life. But then the earth begins to do what? It repairs itself. Then the populace grows back up again. So what are they worried about? They're contradicting their own message. They're acting like the earth can't repair itself. They're trying to save things that through the natural course, certain species become evasive to humanity and they've got to go. As a consequence of their meddling, the insect population is way out of balance. Do you guys know what that means? Yes, insect plagues are starting to arise. Fungal plagues are rising, not because of the heat, because of the offsets in the balance of these things. What God does is very precise. If man interferes with that, he does not know all the natural systems of the earth to manage them. It takes angels to manage this earth. So why would man assume that he's mature enough to manage everything about the earth when we only know about 1.2% of what the earth is? Did you know that? They bedazzled people with numerical data and mankind only knows what 1.2% of the earth actually is. The rest, they have no idea what it is. You can't manage something by knowing 1.2% of it. So even by their own standards, they've messed up. And all of that is to dethrone God in your mind. All of it. It's so bad now that when a storm comes, people say, well, man made that storm. Well, what happened to the Father's natural processes and the important job that storms do, even tornadoes, even hurricanes? What about in the Bible when it says that as man is iniquitous, so will the earth respond? I'm paraphrasing, which means based on man's activities and his out of control behavior, the earth is going to have natural correction parameters that it will begin to initiate. We're going to have more storms. Do you know why? Because with more activity offset in certain areas, it causes the atmospherics to go a little bit out of balance. More carbon in one area than oxygen in another, more nitrogen in one area than hydrogen, balanced hydrogen in the upper atmospheres for another. And so guess what happens? You have a reaction of forces, a common reaction of forces. Storms form. And every time it rains or every time we have a hurricane, things are put back in balance. Why well, give that credit to mankind? Storms are destructive, but only by a flesh perspective. If you were to see that in the wholeness of this earth and what it takes to carry on life on this planet, you would say, how ingenious is that? 
I don't give credit to mankind. I'm not going to sit there and say everything is harp. I know exactly what harp is doing. I know exactly what harp is for. That machine stays broken so many days of the year, it's not even funny. They have issues and political issues coordinating with other countries to run the total harp array. It's not just one harp array in America that disrupts all the weather on the planet. The atmosphere is in constant motion. You heat one part of the atmosphere, it's just going to go into another part of the earth. Anyway, because we can't see it. Because it's a secret. It's still a secret. There's no need to argue over that, which is why I don't really mention it too much. You can't prove that one way or the other. Now that people know about it, anything bad that happens, they're going to give credit to Harp. They're going to give credit to other devices they haven't yet mentioned. They'll do it every single time. I will not, because the Lord promised us. He promised us to stress at nations with perplexity. And what did he say right after that? Jesus, the seas and the waves roaring. What does that mean? Bad weather. That's what that means. Distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring means that mankind is going to be all out of sorts and things are going to overwhelm humanity by what weather? What are you starting to see? You're starting to see man being overwhelmed by what weather? That's what you're starting to see. By all sorts of weather phenomena. And now that the seas are in these these uh, heat anomalies are all over the place. Some are not consistent with volcanic activity in the ocean. We're having these bad storms to form in many different places. And did you know the USA carries the grunt of the worst storms of all the earth? The USA does. Why do the USA have most of the storms? Have you guys ever looked up that fact? Who do you, nobody else is suffering with the storms that the USA does. Did you know that? If you really look at the history, you'll know what was here. You'll know what the Native Americans settled and had peace with. All the stories of Cretans and creatures right here in America. Did you know that? All the catacomb kingdoms were right here in America. And it seems like the nastiest spirits on earth have been right here in America. Hitler, whether people believe it or not, killed as many Jews as he could. Do you know what happens every single year in America? The same thing is happening every single year in America. We have more prisons than anywhere on the face of the earth right here in America. More crime than anywhere on the face of the earth right here in America. But why? Because we had the word first. That's why. We have the word of God. And when anybody has the word of God, and they decide to set that word over in the corner somewhere, where they make something else by heart, then they have their, the same pattern as Israel that it had all throughout history. So will that nation have it. Being blessed in the beginning, but casting what blessed them aside, a curse ends up overwhelming, correction, a filtering. Even now that can be changed. But the Christians in America, what do you think they want? What do the Christians in America want? Do they even know what they want? Do you guys know what you want as a Christian? What do you want? Most people say, I want to go to heaven. I want to leave this place and go to heaven. I can tell you right now, that is not what I ultimately want. I know what the Lord said. The Lord said that if I can be true family with him and follow his ways, I will spend eternity with him. I'll be part of the family. So I need not have that on my mind so much as having a hope for other portions of humanity. That's my greatest hope. But the average Christian hope is to get out of this place, to abandon this place, and go to heaven where they don't have to do anything. But the Lord put you right here. He put us all on this earth. And our primary motivation is to abandon the place he put us at. Because see, the work is here. He put us right here where the work is. So why do we have a strong desire to abandon all work and to go home when he put us here in the first place? Where does that come from? It is the hope that makes us not ashamed. The promise of the end, the thoroughness of the living God, if we should hold close to ourselves. But how can a Christian who is called by the living God to do work in the earth always seek to abandon the work and abandon the people? See, because to leave the earth is to leave everybody behind. And how many of you are just ready to leave everybody behind? Because if you are, in all truth, if you are, the people are not important to you. Their salvation is not important to you. If you're ready to just leave them all behind, if your primary focus is to just accuse and point, and have you noticed the people who accuse and point? They're ready to go right now. There are some out there who are rough around the edges. They don't speak about the rapture. And these people have a great concern for their neighbor. 
I've noticed that. They're ready to go all the way. See, I trust the Lord, which is why I don't normally talk about the rapture. I need not talk about those things because I trust the Lord. If you fed a child at dinner time every day at 7 p.m., and that child every day at 6.58 says, where's dinner? That would eventually get to you. That child doesn't trust you for all these years that they would continue to ask, where's dinner? You've been preparing dinner all that time. You may turn around one day and say, listen, have I not been preparing you dinner every day of your life at this time? And if the kid says yes, you may say, good, then be quiet. You know you're going to get dinner. Why do you continue to state that? In my case, I understand that dinner is going to be served. I need not bring it up. My focus is on the works. Not the works themselves, the work for the other people, the people who are not making it, the people who are just like us, the people who fall through the cracks, the people who of whom nobody talks about, the people that cannot be seen, the people that can't go to church, the people that don't have clothes to go to church, the people that barely have enough to eat, the people that can't get it right, the people who are stuck in their ways, yet they love the Lord but can find no one to discuss anything with. That's where my heart is as a consequence of that. A true consequence. The Lord has never allowed a season in this earth to surprise me. Not one. It's almost as though I expected that sort of thing to happen. It didn't make me supernatural, special, one of a kind, or any of those things. It just simply means I'm aware. But my heart is with the people. And during this season that we're in, I hope that more people have a heart for people. Not continually focus on leaving everybody behind and going and having freedom for themselves. You know, when you're in combat, if a person were to ever do that, were to just leave everybody behind and go seek freedom for themselves or safety for themselves, that person does not have a good time. That person cannot be trusted. The people you can trust in very harsh conditions are those who would sacrifice to make sure that you achieve what you need to achieve. Those are the ones you can trust, not the Rambos who want to kill everything. No, the ones who are thinking about the other people there. The ones who do what they do so that people can survive, so that people can live in this case. Aren't we the ones appointed to bring the message of life to other people? And in the Bible it says, how can they hear unless one be sent? And in the Old Testament, the Lord said, whom shall I send? Who can I send? And then he told us what the conditions were. Who can I send that will face persecution, yet suffer that persecution for the sake of the lost? Who could I send who would no doubt lose everything more than once to carry my message? Who could I send who would carry something within them nobody would like? Who could I send to be hated of all people in the earth? You know what? Christians today, they look for the opposite. They want to be appreciated. They want to thank you. They want to pat on the back. They want all this stuff so they can continue. They want compensation. They want everything so they can continue. But the Lord said, whom shall I send who won't receive any of that, who will be rebuked even by their own families? Who can I send with my word that would actually suffer all those things for the sake of the lost, for the sake of one, for the sake of the truth? Who shall I send? But in this world, they have turned servitude into prestige they have earthly prestige have you noticed so that when if you're in servitude you're supposed to have new clothing the best suits the best car the best this the best that you're supposed to be clean from head to toe that's not servitude that's a presentation that's how the world works have you noticed in your life the person who actually got to you was the person who was not dressed the best. It was the person you never expected to impart a word to you that sticks with you this very day. And most notably, in a lot of cases, not all, but it was a person who did not come by way of a church. It was something somebody said, and it was so sincere because they came and looked just like the average person. But what they said was so profound, it sticks with you this very day. The Lord called us to be real not to be actors and actresses, not to conform to the doings of this world, but to operate by a kingdom standard. That's why we search Christ out and what he desires. That's why I'm so stuck on what the Lord desires, and I'm totally against what this world has established.
take a look at the world. What they have established is not working out. And God has already mentioned that. Everything they do costs lives, doesn't it? Everything the world builds is on the backs of the innocent and the oppressed. And their blood cries out in the earth. Which means everything on earth must be knocked down and must fall. Because there's a principle in the word of God. Anything, any nation, anything built upon the blood of the innocent. That foundation must be discovered and that place cannot continue. It will be hewn down. That's our father's principle. And that time is closer and closer because people no longer realize what they're striving so hard to prop up has been built upon the backs of the oppressed, of the poor, and of every type of person who has faced oppression in these lands. This is all over the world. And this principle never fails. And it will come. And it's forming now, but it's not going to come when people are ready for it. It's going to come when the Lord declares it to come. And I believe that season is already upon us. And we don't know how long that season lasts. But we can see the escalations, can't we? We can also see that people are not repenting. You know, when the Lord said, If my people, right, who are called by my name, when humble themselves and pray and turn and seek my face. That's not what they're doing. You know what they're doing? They're justifying everything that they do. The Lord did not say justify what you're doing. He said humble yourself and pray. But that's not what they're doing. Because in 2023, everybody wants to be right. Not righteous. Right. They want to be right. And as a consequence of that, what do we have in the world? Because the Lord's word is true. He didn't say if the world would repent. He said, if my people who are called by my name would repent. But what do you see among those who even love the Lord? They're trying to be right, aren't they? Is there not a spirit roaming among us that causes us to justify what we say? Is there not a spirit of offense that causes us to defend ourselves and to defend what we say? There's a spirit where somebody will always speak as though they know more than the next guy. That's not humility. That is self-justification. And people are using scripture to justify themselves. That's how you know it's wrong. When you justify yourself based on scripture, something is not right. Jesus never did that. He was the truth and would not argue with a fool. A fool is called a fool because a fool is right in his own eyes. And even in Proverbs, it says you cannot argue with a fool. You will lose because they will always be right in their own eyes my hope and it's not easy it's not easy doing certain things that i do to keep everything in balance it's not easy but my hope is that through this place specifically through you all because the lord has certainly sent some genuine people which is why i'm highly confident that when i hand over cot it's going to be in good hands that the lord has sent some people who who are committed to doing a real work not just the work that looks good to the eye but a thorough work not to keep the standards of the world, but to break ground with a kingdom standard, God's kingdom, his standard, in these times of great need. Because there are so many out there who have a need of a genuineness of the word of God. They don't need the show. They need the word. They want the word. They want the food, not the plate, not the forks, not the nice crystal. They don't want the nice table. They want the word of God to put it into practice. They're looking for it. And if this place can prepare it, they'll find it. Somebody asked me a long time ago, they said, well, Mike, if you don't advertise, how is anybody going to find COT? Well, in the Bible, it says, if we will lift up the name of the Lord, he will call all men unto us. Isn't that what the word says? That's what the word says. That's the standard of the word of God. That's how we've been operating. There's no marketing campaign. We just lift up the name of the Lord. And how do you lift up the name of the Lord? His standards. What he said. Not theories, not all this stuff of mankind, but the word of God. Current events is, is excellent. People shouldn't fight current events. You need to know what's going on around you. People get scared of current events. They get scared of, like me, for example, I know what's going on in the White House and the Pentagon and all these different places. But what do you think would happen if I turned my ear away from that? The Lord told me not to do that. If I cannot suffer what somebody else is saying, then I'm hearing it for myself. You turn away when you hear something for yourself. Here's what happens when you're taking in all the information for somebody else to help them. You can hear everything 
anybody says. You can hear Satan himself speak so long as you take it in for the sake of somebody else. I will always hear what any serpent has to say in this earth. I will always know what they're up to. Why? Because I'm not listening for me. If it were just me, I wouldn't want to hear anything they had to say. I'm not listening just for me. Go on and helping somebody out out there. Because a lot of people say, I can't watch this person, hear this person. Well, well, if you collected intel for other people to instruct them, you can listen to anybody out there. I guarantee you, if you have kids growing up and they're going out into the world, you mean to tell me you're not going to tell them anything about the real world? about what they're going to face, you're going to turn your ear off, not listen to anything, not know anything. That is not good instruction. Do you not know you're fortified when you start doing things for other people? If you do it just for yourself, you might, I'm in bad shape if I do things just for myself. I gave you guys that last week. Remember when I said I can't, I can't muster enough strength to do anything for me. It, it just won't work, but I can do everything for other people. I am motivated and driven by having a heart for other people. That's where my strength lies. I know something else, that's where your strength lies. You'll run out of strength and and say, oh, I'm so tired, I'm ready to go if you're doing stuff for yourself. But when you're in true servitude to other people because you care about them, don't do it for show, do it for real. All you have to do is find someone you truly do love and begin to labor on their behalf. Labor in the word for them and the Lord will not withhold anything from you. That's how you become one. And when you become wise, all of a sudden you're no longer grumpy again. You may be heavy, but you'll always have joy. See, I'm heavy with joy. I'm never absent joy. I don't need anything to spark my joy. Am I heavy with information, knowing certain things that possibly another won't? Of course. Do I live my life by the illusion right, that the world gives? No, I do not. That's why I'm heavy. But nothing can steal my joy. I'm aware of what serpents do, yes. I can hear the politicians, yes, because I have to stay armed and equipped with what they have to say for your sakes. And when people start to go off the rails in directions that won't, you know, not meaning anything, I'll do my best to let them know, hey, listen, these guys are just in an argument. So what they said was part of that argument. Let's focus on Christ again. And to date, has anybody really missed anything? I remember years ago, somebody said, why didn't you cover that earthquake? Because it was unimportant at the time. That's why. Because it did not impact a soul. That's why. When you do what you do for the sake of others, the Lord will have you relevant in every hour of every day relevant. You won't report on everything. You're not going to do that. But you will have the spiritual pulse of things in the world. That will cause a heaviness. But that heaviness goes with knowing what other people need to watch for. You can encourage them. You can edify them and the body of Christ. Because somebody always has to know what the enemy is doing. And in the Bible it says he would not have a secret concerning the devices of the enemy. The mechanisms, the plans of the enemy. He's not going to have a secret concerning the plans of the enemy. There's always going to be somebody in the body of Christ for that. But when you look at these politicians and see, I have to hear them. I have to hear exactly what they're saying. You'd be surprised what you can pick up from these guys. Now, if you're if you're evaluating their message with your flesh ears, of course, you're not going to like it because it goes against what you want them to say. I'm not listening to anybody so they can say what I want them to say. I'm not listening to anybody to confirm or to go against anything I want them to say or not to say. I'm not doing that. I'm listening to them to know the condition of things around me, where their minds are, where their plant. They tell you everything, everything. And if you could hear them, if you could hear through your own offenses, through your own flesh, if you could do that, they'll tell you everything about themselves, everything about what they're going to do, everything about their collective intent. You'll know they do it every single time, every. They cannot help but to do it. And that too is a principle. But most people are so offended they can't hear them and they end up believing in a theory or something like that that never comes to fruition and what they really do to the people the people often miss don't they because they believe them to do one thing 
when in fact when they serve they do something else and after their term is up they can't tell what they did because they didn't see their favorite thing happen right christians do that they're they're looking for people to do a specific thing they're looking to do what they believe they're going to do many of you guys may have a theory about politics and so you will look to politicians to do what's inside that theory in so doing you're missing what they're doing every day to know that you'd have a heaviness but you will also be equipped equipment is heavy i know it doesn't quite match but to be equipped there's going to be a heaviness period if you're running around like peter pan you have no equipment correct somebody says pray for them that's right the lord said pray for your leaders he didn't say persecute them he said pray for them does anybody know why he said pray for your leaders because you're in the land that they rule that's why do you know what he said he would do to the leaders for your sex oh and by the way he has never failed to do it he never failed to do it he ne never once did he ever fail to do this through all the leaders he he has done this through all the leaders every single leader he did it through all of them he did he even did it through obama through the clintons through all the people that people commonly say that they don't like he did the same thing through all of them trump he did through trump to bush bush singer all of them anybody know what it was the lord said for your sakes for your sakes he moves the hearts of leaders to do specific things that directly affect you all the time because you live in those lands he put them in those positions and they will exact things for you in those lands now when the antichrist comes all that will change but he has not come yet until this very day you're still freely speaking about the word of god isn't that something see a long time ago you couldn't freely speak about the word of god you couldn't not during the time of christ and it took rome being destroyed so that the word would go forward and then it took a restructuring of rome itself before anybody could freely speak about the word of god so prayer worked men began to pray because rome was still loitering over the word of god and they would not let people believe according to christ they wouldn't they were persecuting people as government and the church and so they had separation of church and state in this country so that would never happen why because if you rule as a king you control the faith of the place you rule and if we had not had separation of church and state then at the white house they would have governed how you would believe in god that's what they truly separated but then Satan usurped it. Of course he did. But the Lord still works on your behalf for those people in those positions of power. That's why he said, pray for your leaders. He didn't say persecute them. He put people in place. He said this in the Old Testament. There are people in place that will keep the checks and balances according to God's will in the earth. But when it comes to you, their hearts are moved for your sakes, not for your neighbor's sake, for your sakes. Their hearts are moved. For your protection, they do things that you can keep your hands clean of. They are set up to do that. All that's in the word of God. And I think it's utterly amazing it's in there. But it's just not referred to often. Because the language of politics, this draconian speech that so many are accustomed to is quite popular in the world. And based upon your political idea, your, your ideals in politics that are based in politics, you are accepted among certain groups or not. I'm probably accepted among no groups because I believe in the kingdom establishment, not the political establishment. I know that men have to do what they do, but that's why God called them to do things in the world and he called us to do things in his kingdom. He didn't call us those of the kingdom to do everything in the world, everything in the kingdoms of men. He didn't call us to do that. He called us for the establishment of the kingdom which is why it also says in the new testament the kingdom of god is not come no one's going to say lo here it is or lo there it is but the kingdom of god is born within you it comes from within you and it's coming out so you become a kingdom established peace that shares the standards of the kingdom with everyone around you and it spreads out from there that's how it's established by our transformation that's how it's established we're here to represent that kingdom, the kingdom of the living God. That's what we're here to represent. All that's in the word of God. But in today's world, it's almost like, you know, people don't really want to talk about those things in the word of God. 
They're turning the word of God slowly and surely into something else. Which is why it's good that you have your own personal relationship with Christ. That is extremely important. That you may complement the righteousness of another brother and sister in Christ. And you become a complement in total of God's righteousness, representation of his righteousness in the earth as you complement your brother and sister. If, if a brother or sister is doing something that is not righteous, you don't have to join in or complement with that. You don't have to do that. But you can complement the good. When you encourage someone by way of righteousness, do you not know that person does more and more righteous things? And they will cast away darkness themselves. Do you not know that? People do dark things because they believe they have to survive that way. Start proving them wrong. You do that through representation. That's how you do it. You do it by you yourselves not doing those wrong things to survive, but begin to survive by faith that you may thrive, that you may have life and have life more abundantly. That happens with your established relationship with Christ. People know what they're doing wrong, and I can almost assure you, they're looking for a way to do the righteous thing. People do wrong because they believe that's all they can do, that they're going to fail every other way. Do you know that? What caused the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers and scribes to seek the life of Christ to want to kill him? For they couldn't hear what he was saying. They were so they were so bent on getting him, they couldn't hear what he said. I noticed that in the New Testament of the apostles too. What the apostles said was true as they admitted, but I noticed something. The apostles healed a person. It was a beautiful healing. Yet, those people in power overlooked the healing, overlooked the good and the miracle itself to another human being. But what was it that blinded them so badly that they would overlook the benefit to humanity? The graciousness and the goodness of God worked through a vessel here on this earth that in their minds, the only thing they could see, the only plan that they had was to go and jail him, lock him up, throw him away. That, that same thing happens today, by the way. You know what it was? They were so offended. They were so offended. They could not hear the voice of the living God. Offense can cause you to not hear the living God. They were so offended, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees and those guys, they were so offended by a blasphemous act that built up into an ideology. So that ideology became an offense and it was so bad that they ignore the actual work of the living God in the earth. That will blind you. Offenses will blind you. Offenses will blind you. Jesus talked about those offenses. And maybe you didn't hear that before, but offenses will blind you. That's why your eyes should be singled, because if it's not single, you're going to be offended, and you won't be able to see, and only darkness will come from you. With everybody that you guys hear preaching out there, all people are people. And people are going to have ways that may offend you for one reason or another. Stop looking at flesh that you won't be offended so that you can hear what the Lord is offering you. So you can grow by the richness that is out there. If you can get past the offense, you'll not be blinded and you will be blessed. That's how you do it. These politicians, when they speak, you're offended. A ton of accusations comes up. Does God put accusation within you? No. That comes by the spirit of offense. Accusations come by way of the spirit of offense. Those people back in the time of Christ had nothing but accusations for Christ. Those who didn't follow him did not. They accused him. They looked for ways to accuse him. They ignored all of what God did through them. They could not see the wonderful works of God nor the word of God because they were so offended. That same thing happens today. If you hear somebody out there preaching and say you don't like that person preaching, it's because you're offended. You're offended. Do you know that offense will fester, will grow, will overtake? It's only a matter of time. That same offense. Now, Jesus said it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to him through whom they come. You see that? So it initiates. Back in the times of old, there were others who came before Christ who claimed to be Christ. They were offended by that, that they couldn't accept anybody else who had ever come to fulfill prophecy. The same thing happens today. Someone in your past, a major offense came through right now to this very day. 
anybody who ever says anything close to the one who offended you, you put them in the same category. You shut off your hearing. You know why that never works? Because everybody God used was messed up except Melchizedek. Do you know that? All of us are sinners saved by grace. I know that people want to be, you know, angelic beings and perfect in everything they do. But we're just human beings. Sinners saved by grace called out of the earth unto the Lord's wonderful work, his message to carry the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We're just sinners saved by grace. If you were to look at the flesh of me and the deeds of flesh of me, you would have nothing but offense. There's no one here who has done worse than I. But if you were to only see that, you wouldn't hear a word I had to say. You'd grow by nothing because you would not be able to hear anything of the word coming through me, nor would you accept it. But how many do this towards other people who would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, who would share a word of encouragement? Don't let the spirit of offense work through you. You have the right to shut it down. Put things in perspective, the perspective of truth. We're all sinners saved by grace. We were all once children of wrath. We were all just like those politicians. We were all just like the worst person. We were thieves, murderers, adulterers. You name it, that's what we were. But by the blood of the Lamb, we were embraced. What? And the avenue of repentance came and a restoration took place. Remember that. See, that's why there's no way somebody else is going to offend me. Because it was likely worse than they were or just like them. People change. And as they change and accept Christ, a work through that person can be done so that others can change through the acceptance of Christ. Let your representation of that be real and true. Realize, never deny, that you were a sinner, but you're saved by the grace of God. It's a, it's a gift of God. We did not earn it. Somebody said, I'm still baffled why Jesus saved me, and so am I. But he did it as a gift. It was a gift of the living God. God sent his son for that. So that was God's love. Now see, understanding of it, it's that simple. God so loved the world. It's that simple. For God so loved the world. It really is that simple. And it's a gift. Without the gift, none of us would make it. We could not earn it. We're naturally filthy, and we could not earn it. It was a gift. Never forget that, guys. Never forget that.